In this video, let's learn about query string. We have covered the HTTP get, post, and HTTP put, these verbs. The next one naturally goes to the HTTP delete. But for delete to work, we don't have enough information if we just base on URL and the HTTP method. So if we say delete, we perform deletion based on this location, then the natural question comes is which employee do you want to delete? So that information can come from different resources. It can come from the URL. It can come from the HTTP header. It can even come from the body. But HTTP query string is a option to pass this type of information. So what is a query string? A query string is actually part of the URL itself. And it starts with a question mark, and then it's a key value pair again. And so the key value pair is separated by equal sign. So for example, I say ID equals one, right? So this provides us with the information about the employee. So if I say I want to perform the delete action based on this particular URL, then we know exactly which employee we're trying to perform the deletion, right? So we're hitting this employee's endpoint, but we're providing this ID. So we know exactly that employee ID number one needs to be deleted. Same thing with a get method, for example. If we want to get a particular employee instead of all of the employees, we can use the same URL, but this time the HTTP method is different. Anyways, the way to provide a query string key value pair is to start with a question mark off after the regular URL is provided. And then you provide the variable name, the equal sign, and the value. If you want to provide multiple key value pair here, for example, ID equals one, and, and at the same time, name equals Frank, you can use a ampersand here. Ampersand, and then another key value pair separated by, okay, once we have this URL coming, to the Kestrel server. This URL is again converted by the Kestrel server to the HTTP context object. It will specifically stay inside the HTTP request object in the context. So let's take a look. Over here, for now, I temporarily comment out all of this code that we used, or let me actually delete them for now. And then let's use the context. So context.request, and then you see that we actually have a query object here. Right. We have this query object here, which is a query collection. It is actually a dictionary, right? so you can treat it as a dictionary. And we also have a query string here. So what we can do here is, first of all, we can use await context.response.write async, and we can write out the query string object like this. It doesn't like it, so we can convert it to string. Now, if we do this and run the application, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have this. And if I want to say, I want to go to employees and the ID is number two, and I hit enter, you can see that the raw query string is already provided to us as ID equals to two. And then if I provide name equals to Frank, then I have this raw query string just like that. Okay, so the raw query string is not very useful to us. We want to see the separate key and pair values. So to do that, we can use the query dictionary here. It has contains keys. Okay? So if we look at the keys, then we can use a for each loop. We can say key in keys. And now we can output the key value pair here by saying key is, and then we can provide the value by saying context.request.query. We provide the key here. Then we can have a character return just like that. And if we run it, we can see the key value pair that is separated and display on each line. All right. Let's try that. Employees. So here we don't have anything. If I just say employees without the query string, now, if I say ID2, then ID2 is output to the page. And if I add an percent and name equals Frank, then I have name equals Frank over here. If I add another one, I say position equals manager, display right here. Okay, so now we have an additional way, which is use part of the URL, pass the information to the server. So that the server can have additional information to process. And this particular way of passing information to the server is called query string. One thing that you have to be very careful about is that when you use query string to pass information from the client to the server, do not pass any sensitive information because 
the query string is part of the URL, which will be kept in the browser history. So anyone who has access to the computer, they would be able to see the URL and see your sensitive information. So if you decide to use the query string to pass information from the client to the server, be careful not to include any sensitive information in the query string. And that's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.